Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Andy Odovalk. I have with me here today this gaming deck M from 4C Audio, which is the K5 Pro. So let's just uh, check out the build and the content itself. As you can see here inside this box, you're going to get this deck itself, obviously. And it comes together with uh, three different set of cables which is this uh, USB-C to C and A, in fact, with an adapter, okay? Also, we have here optical cable, which means that this K5 Pro supports optical out, digital out. And also, we have here audio splitter for the microphone, all right? And of course, we have here this uh, instruction manual. If you look at the front here, okay, it is in fact named as K5 Pro Mini Stereo Gaming Deck. So it is a gaming deck. And the most interesting part here, you see these three knobs? This is in fact the on off and volume knob. And these two additional knobs here, which are bass and treble. And of course, the interface is only 3.5 mm single-ended for the audio out. And we also have here, I believe, for the microphone itself. Okay. And at the back here, you can see that this K5 Pro offer even RCA out, which means that it is possible to connect this to an external device or even speaker to drive uh, directly from this internal amp. And in fact, as you can see here, I mentioned just now that this thing support optical line. And this is the main interface to connect to the source, which is the USB Type-C and also the 5 volt power derived from the USB. And in fact, I have actually opened up this deck. As you can see here, this K5 Pro is in fact built on this uh, a deck which is not familiar to me. It is named Solid State System. And in fact, the version itself is Triple S 1700. And true enough, when I checked using TTGK, the product ID was listed there as 5888 1700. So this is in fact, if you look at the specification there, this is a 24-bit deck with a limited frequency up to 96 kilohertz. So what does it mean? It means that this K5 Pro is designated just to play PCM resolution up to 96 kilohertz. And I have verified that when attached to my audio gear, I was not able to play any kind of uh, higher resolution file, especially DSD file beyond 96K. So just bear that in mind. As for the rest of the spec, have a look here. So this is in fact, as I mentioned earlier, limited up to 24 bit, 96 kilohertz, and the output power rating itself. As can be seen here, it is in fact uh, offering quite high, 1000 milliwatt of power per channel at 16 ohm. But the one that's more applicable for more scenario is probably this one, which is 500 milliwatt per channel at 32 ohm because 32 ohm is pretty much the most common standard used by many IEM and headphones. And in fact, it support all the way rated for 300 ohm of headphone like this Sennheiser HD 650 here. And if you look at the signal to noise ratio, it is in fact listed at 110 dB of sensitivity. I must say that anything under 120 dB of sensitivity is kind of a bit like considered as not as silent. But one thing that I can share with you right now, I have in fact tested this K5 Pro with highly sensitive IEM as low as 5.3 ohm. <laughs> and I am happy to say that I don't hear any kind of floor noises coming from this uh, deck despite having that kind of a bit low when it comes to signal to noise ratio. So no worries about that. Let's just have a look here at uh, 
4C Audio official site. And in fact, this is their Amazon store. It is listed there as 75.99 US dollar. And in fact, at that kind of price, I think this is a very solid offering considering that the build quality is top notch, very industrial, robust. And in fact, I really like these three buttons here, the tactile adjustable volume button, which is kind of a bit classic and reminded me to this sort of retro amplifier, as you can see here, Kenwood old amplifier. You've probably seen this somewhere, you know, during the times of the 80s or even 90s in, in almost every household, people who appreciate music, you know, attached to speakers and stuff like that. And they always have these two button, bass and treble, as you can see there. And definitely, I love this. All right. So I have attached my K5 Pro here to my PC using USB 3.0. And it is, in fact, plug and play. No need to install any specific driver. Very simple. And as you can see here, I also have attached my headphone here, which is a Fostec T40 RP MK3 magnetic planner. 91 dB of sensitivity, very difficult to drive. And as you can see here, I have also attached my microphone, external microphone. In fact, you are listening to me using via this microphone now. So that is probably the best way to show the capability of this K5 Pro when it comes to that microphone function there. If you are hearing the sound and it is clear, usable, Definitely, it is a good thing. Okay, so let's just have a look at the feature here. In order to switch on this K5 Pro, this is the button that you need to press. In fact, just press it inward and until you hear a click, which means that it will be turned on now. And the function here would be by default using the phone out. And of course, uh, these two button here, which is the bass and the treble, it is uh, set at the middle here, which is in fact the setting to, you know, without any kind of adjustment or boosting to the sound frequency itself. So these are the default setting. All right. Now, let's talk about the sound element of this K5 Pro itself first. Okay. Definitely, this K5 Pro is listed as a gaming deck M. And as such, you have seen earlier that the limitation of the resolution for this K5 Pro is at 96 kilohertz, which means that it is capable of playing only PCM format, which is essentially FLAC file, MP3, or even uh, you know any of the streaming uh, for as long as it does not exceed 96 kilohertz. And in fact, I have actually tested it with my collection of uh, test music here and with different kind of uh, listening equipment. Not just limited to this headphone, obviously. I also use my Sennheiser HD 650 here. And also my another magnetic planner, which is Hi-Fi Man HE 400 SE. And the reason that I am focusing a bit more on headphone, because this is designated as a desktop deck amp. So it just makes sense to use headphone rather than earphone. But I do test this. Uh, I have tested this K5 Pro with in-ear monitors IEM that I have and especially uh, the one that I have tested so far was in fact uh, obviously Tanjim Zero and then of course I have my uh, Big Quest Winter C Audio Bravery AE and Atimotic ER2 XR and also uh, Hedis MS5 Will this K5 Pro be able to handle highly sensitive IEM as low as 5.3 ohm and I am happy to say that, you know, despite the seemingly not so impressive signal to noise ratio, that I am was dead silent. I, I did not hear any kind of floor noise or background noise, which is definitely a positive thing when it comes to listening to music. Okay, now let's just talk about the sound itself first. All right, for music. First and foremost, this deck M is definitely something which I consider as neutral sounding in the setting that you can see here, which is uh, with the volume knob or treble and bass knob being set to middle. There's no element of boosting or coloration to the sound frequency itself. 
So it is definitely flat. It is faithful to the sauce. How it is mustard, that is how I am hearing it. And as for the dynamic presentation itself, it is definitely, uh, I would even consider it as being analytical. In fact, I can relate the sort of sound signature coming from this uh, K5 Pro being similar to ESS Sabre sort of tuning, meaning that it is kind of like crispy, analytical, and in fact, very bold with the notes or the sound itself. And in fact, the dynamic extension itself is quite impressive, I must say, for a gaming deck because I was able to hear proper mic micro and macro details on both ends of the frequency from the upper frequency to the lower frequency and even the definition of the mid-range itself is very solid. The attack is smooth, the attack is crisp, in fact. And just perhaps depending on what partner that I am attaching it to, in fact, the sound signature itself can be considered as slightly on the brighter side. So a manner of saying is that if I were to attach this K5 Pro with natively bright sounding partner, something like, for example, Atimotic ER2XR or even this Hi-Fi Man HE400SE, the sound output can be a bit, you know, brighter than how I prefer it. So, for example, the upper mid-range, the Pina region, it can be emphasized to a point that almost becoming sibilant when subjected to listening to certain type of, you know, vocals or even uh, attack of the mid-range. For example, like soprano vocal, they are very picky, like Maria Carey or even Alison Krauss. I would notice that, you know, the age, the resolution itself, the attack of that, you know, sound would be a bit sharper than usual. But... Having said that, attaching this K5 Pro with something which is relatively, you know, a bit more natural, organic, or even warmer sounding, especially, then the synergy is simply perfect. I am hearing very good element of balance of sound, especially when I start tweaking this button here. All right, so this is the best part. For example, like when I use my Sennheiser HD650 here, which is relatively warmer sounding, in a way, okay, I actually adjusted the treble to be a bit higher so that I can hear a bit more of sparkle and energy in the upper frequency. And depending on what sort of music that I'm listening to, sometimes when I listen to rock or metal music or even black metal, like you see here, I have a few, all right, I actually boosted the bass a bit. And in fact, the good thing is that with this adjustment, as you can see there, it is, in fact, you know, very effective. It does not exhibit any kind of, let's say, uh, wait, <laughs> I have uh, fog on my, a moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. Cannot see anything. Okay. Right. Where was I? Okay. I was saying that when I adjust the, the volume knob for treble and bass, in fact, the good thing is that the bass itself does not become bloated. Okay. So unlike software EQ, which have a tendency to exhibit some sort of distortion or even bloating. This bass uh, knob here, even adjusted to the max, it actually emphasize the lower frequency really well. You know, it is very solid, especially for mid bass. And for the treble itself, it actually emphasize more on the sparkle and the energy itself. No hint of it being grainy or being harsh in any way, even set to the maximum when attached to my Sennheiser HD 650. So that is definitely a huge plus. Okay, now let's talk about the gaming aspect of this K5 Pro. It is, after all, designated as a gaming deck. So let's just uh, have a look here first, especially if you are into online gaming like I do, at which I use uh, this Discord most of the time. Okay. I'm just opening up Discord now. This is where I do my gaming. And for the most part, I play, in fact, uh, Elder Scroll Online. And I was able to use this, you know, K5 Pro really well. In fact, when it comes to these settings here. First, I use this Discord in order to actually to connect to the rest of my teammates, you know, when we do dungeon and everything like that, like, you know, MMO kind of game. So 
obviously the setting here as you can see here i already set it so that it will be using uh 4ck5 pro and when i join into a gaming run or something like that usually i'll just join into some of the you know group here and suffice to say that i am totally happy with the outcome of it there was no element of latency or any any kind of distortion or any kind of unsavory result that i am getting both from the output and from the input itself as for the gaming itself okay let's just do a bit of gaming to test the sound the surround sound of this k5 pro so in order to do that i just gonna load up here my favorite character here avani <laughs> all right let's just load her up and avani is a, uh, a stamina damage dealer templar so i am loading it up now let's just wait a bit because this is online up all okay hello avani are you ready for some action okay you can probably hear some of the sound it's right now with me let's just travel to uh, let me see this much yeah so just gonna go to this much and we're just gonna do some dungeon run okay because usually in a dungeon that is where you want to have you know surround sound capability so that you'll be able to tell which direction you know the enemies or even uh, element of threat coming from so where is the dungeon Okay, it's over there. Okay, let's go over there. No one's allowed inside the So public dungeon. Okay. Loading up, just a bit. This is online. Alright, Avani, are you ready? Let's just see her inventory first. Okay, she have all her weapon all properly set up. Okay, let's go. That was an overkill. <laughs> oh, somebody else is here already. Okay, so which means that I need to find some enemies. But I can definitely hear proper surround sound. Okay. Ah, yo. Alright. So we have some enemy here. Easy, busy. Avani, by the way, is configured as a veteran trial damage dealer. So she have a lot of damage. There. Ow! Okay, heal, heal, heal. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's see where we are going to go. Okay, just gonna look for some bosses, hopefully. Let's see the map. All right, let's just go over here. And do this. All right. I was able to hear the sound of the monster creeping from the back. All right. The sound effect itself is really surround. Really good. Just a little bit more. Okay, wow. Okay, down there. Let's go over here. Okay. Let's rumble. Okay, there we go. 
I just enjoy this dungeon. Alright, where's the boss? Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> all right so as you can see there right i am really enjoying the sound from this k5 pro let's just uh exit okay much much done there okay now let's talk about comparison how does this k5 pro fares against the rest of the competition within the same price bracket and segment and in fact, I have with me here this uh, Venture Electronic Megatron and this Fio Q11, which I have reviewed recently. Let's just have a look at the price itself. As you can see here, I have shown you earlier, this uh, K5 Pro is in fact 76 US dollar. And here we have this uh, Q11 price at 85 US dollar, slightly more expensive. And this Megatron being the cheapest among them all at around 50 US dollar. So let's just uh, compare it first against this Q11 here. Okay, you see, the first difference is obviously the size itself. Q11 is smaller. And in fact, Q11 is battery powered. So which means that this thing have battery inside it. And in fact, if you look at the deck, they are definitely different. So does the sound tuning. So let's talk about the sound itself. First, Q11 is uh, slightly less resolving, I must say, when compared directly with this uh, K5 Pro. In fact, when I subject it to, you know, testing side by side with certain element of music, especially uh, modern jazz, I am hearing kind of like, you know, slightly less resolved upper frequency details when it comes to micro details as compared to Q11 and K5 Pro. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, both are still excellent in that regard. It's just that the matter of presentation is just slightly different. So Q11 is just slightly less pronounced, whereas K5 Pro is a bit more pronounced. And also on the matter of synergy. Okay, you see, I have mentioned earlier that K5 Pro seems to synergize really well with natural and even warmer sounding partner where else q11 is the polar opposite it sounds a lot better when attached to natively brighter or analytical partners where else when attached to warmer sounding partner it may lose a bit of resolution and then there's the element of driving power despite this q11 rated higher at 650 milliwatt per channel at 32 ohm and this uh, K5 Pro rated at 500 milliwatt of power at 32 ohm as well when I test the loudness in fact uh, this Q11 required 24 out of 100 where else uh, 4C K5 Pro only needed 16 out of 100 so kind of like <laughs> you know mind-boggling Despite the spec says like that, but the actual implementation when listening using my Sennheiser HD 650, there's a variance of volume level. So just take note of that. Specification does not necessarily mean the actual implementation say or translate into the real result. And then, of course, uh, comparing with this Megatron, 
Both are pretty much similar. In fact, uh, this Megatron is just slightly smaller than K5 Pro. But obviously with Megatron, what you are having is that, you know, no volume adjustment. And in fact, different chip as well. This is ESS chip inside here. But the major difference between these two is the sound tuning again. You see, this Megatron is in fact very neutral, transparent and uncolored. But perhaps the biggest difference is that the tonality and the timber presentation. This K5 Pro is focused a lot more on being hi-fi sounding and not so much on being organic or even let's say analog. Where else this VE Megatron is popular for the analog element to the sound itself. So if you are the type of person like me who love analog sound, definitely i would say that megatron has it but if you prefer hi-fi type of sound k5 pro has it and then when it comes to the element of power itself i would say that you know this megatron definitely is a bit more powerful at 630 milliwatt of power at 32 ohm per channel as opposed to this uh, 4c audio k5 pro at 500 milliwatt of power per channel and in fact with the volume itself uh, this Megatron only needed 12 out of 100 to drive my Sennheiser HD 650 no issue at all and as I mentioned earlier this uh, K5 Pro would require 16 out of 100 so there's a slight different or variance in loudness there but once the volume is matched both are pretty much very competent when it comes to driving Sennheiser HD 650 no issue at all let's just wrap things up for this 4c audio k5 pro all in all as you have seen just now and in fact with my daily usage of this deck m i use it regularly because i am an avid gamer <laughs> it is definitely a very versatile device which cater for both audio and gaming and in fact social media as well it performs flawlessly with all elements I subjected to it and in fact considering the price at just 76 US dollar this is definitely a very very solid package and very easy for me to recommend.